Welcome to Jet Lag Rock and Roll, Roma Edition. I really love this city. I was born here and I chose this city to live at. One of the things I love the most is that it's really diverse and you have a downtown where you have all these historical places and it's really beautiful and fantastic. And then you have the suburbs and in some parts of the suburbs you have a lot of uh, underground art scene going on. And so I think one of the very specific things about Rome that makes it different from other cities is that its size is not too big and not too small, it's just perfect. I was born in this city and uh, I know it very well, but it still surprises me. Every time I take a friend to a tourist spot or around, just walking around the city, it's always new, even if I know it. Another reason why I like this city is because when I feel a little bit depressed or in a bad mood, if I take a walk in the city center, we have a a beautiful blue sky here almost uh, every time. So many historical places uh, which resemble an open air museum. I immediately feel better. It's uh, like a therapy. We are often uh, uh, be on tour in the north of Europe and that makes me appreciate uh, Rome's climate even more. There are uh, seven or eight months when the weather is fantastic. So if you have a terrace, you can feel like a king. There's a lot of stuff going on music-wise, and if you really like going to see live music, there's plenty of shows, there's plenty of different venues. They all do uh, high-quality music all the time. There's plenty of good bands. Another thing that I like about this city, it's a, a little thing, but it's very typical when you come here. If you are thirsty, you don't have to, to go to a bar. You can get fresh water for free from a Nasone, which is like a little drinking fountain uh, called the Nasone, which means a big nose, because you have the, a little tap where the, the water comes from. If it's your first time in Rome, of course you have to walk through the city center, which is huge and uh, will take hours. Uh, I'd start from Villa Medici, which is one of the most beautiful places in Rome uh, with a fantastic view uh, that will give you an idea of the unique city's lights and beauty. One of my favorite sites in places in Rome is uh, the Knights of uh, Malta Quijo, uh, which is on the, one of the seven hills in Rome, uh, Aventino. You, you see a door, which is the door of the um, embassy of Malta and there is door and a little keyhole from there if you look you can see at the end St. Peter and uh, it's very special also because uh, when you are there you are standing on the Italian territory but you are looking through the embassy of Malta which is another state and you are watching a third state which is uh, St. Peter Vaticano, the Vatican City. So it's a very special spot for sure. My favorite site in Rome is MAM, il Museo dell'Altro e dell'Altrove. It is a really interesting and special place in the outskirts of Rome. It used to be a factory, uh, actually a Houston factory, a sausage factory, that uh, then it's been abandoned and a bunch of artists and uh, art critics 
took over and built an interesting art gallery there. But it's uh, different from your usual uh, street art gallery in the fact that people really do live there. Besides being a in really interesting art project, is also an interesting social project, I would say. And people who live there, who, who are homeless people basically, they're really involved in the, in the whole art project and they, they get money out of uh, people who want to visit the, the exhibitions over there and they contribute in different ways. When you go there, it's really nice to be around kids and families who live there and being able to experience the art uh, and be part of the art. You can contribute by doing art yourself inside the factory. It really doesn't even feel like Rome. It feels like it's in the middle of nowhere. But yet, you are in the suburbs of this important historical place. I hope as many people as possible can go there because it's really unusual and unexpected and we really love that place. And uh, you can find uh, a lot of cool street art in um, different parts of Rome, especially in Ostiense and um, Testaccio, but also in Pigneto and uh, San Lorenzo. And in uh, Tormarancia, uh, where there was an, uh, an interesting project, it was a um, urban renewal project designed with uh, the residents, the people who, who live in the council houses. There were more than 20 artists from all over the world that came to Tormarancia and uh, if you go there you can see all these uh, paintings on these buildings all in the same block uh, and it's uh, very, very cool. You can find the cool um, street art also in uh, Centro Sociale Forte Prenestino. Centro Sociale in Italy means squat and Forte Prenestino is uh, uh, probably the, the oldest squat in, um, in Rome. It's been there since 1986 and it's the most famous, I think. There you can find uh, great uh, street art and um, in Forte Prenestino they do a lot of events and gigs. EUR is another place they really love. It's this area in Rome that most Romans hate and they do hate it because it looks completely different from anything else in Rome. It was built basically during the fascist era. They tried to rep make a replica of ancient Rome and, and buildings are really huge and with big uh, statues of, of naked men, but really ex everything is out of proportion. So the feeling is really uh, different from anything else you would experience in Rome and it's not graceful at all but I think this makes it interesting in a way and it is especially interesting if you go at night when everything is shut down and you just have this white marble and this huge uh, gigantic out of proportion statues and buildings I think the feeling is really special and out of the world in a way. Rome is one of the most green cities in Europe and you can't miss to visit uh, a huge beautiful and wild uh, park called uh, Caffarella. Inside you can find farms and it's not unusual to, to run into herds of sheep. And in the middle of the green uh, you can find amazing villas uh, date from the Roman times so I think it's unique really so you have to go there. My favorite park in Rome is Parco degli Acquedotti. It's not really famous, I don't think it's on most of the tour guides, um, but what makes it special is that it's really wild, it's really just um, at the suburbs of Rome, and there's uh, so many ancient Roman ruins, and you can just literally walk through the ruins and with all the flowers around you, and it's really nice in every season actually. I think the spring is the best because you have the poppies and you have the daisies and you have these ancient ruins, and it really makes you feel like you're in some, I don't know, 19th century dream, and it, it's just fantastic. If you want to go to Parco degli Acquedotti, you need to get on the A line subway and stop at Lucio Sestio, and then you can walk around. You can even rent a bike and just go around. Another place where I like to take people is uh, Quartiere Coppedè, which is uh, a little area with uh, more or less 15 buildings uh, designed by this architect Coppedè in the beginning of the 20th century. And it's very special, especially at night, because uh, these buildings remind me of uh, fairy tale buildings, and it's uh, very nice to go there. Another place that I suggest, if you have time, that you go 
is the Ostia Antica. Ostia Antica was the summer resort of ancient Romans and it's not far away from Rome, although it, you have to take a train to get there. It's magnificent because it just preserved the way it was almost uh, back in the day. So you can just walk around this entire little town that was where the ancient Romans used to go to swim and hang out during the summer. If you come to Rome, you have to taste the pizza romana, the Roman pizza, which is different from pizza napoletana, which is known all over the world. Uh, pizza romana is very thin and a little crunchy, and my favorite one is uh, the one uh, made at Pepito's. My favorite pizza is the simplest one. It's uh, just tomato sauce and olive oil. Osteria Bonelli is one of my favorite restaurants in Rome. It's uh, outside of the city center in a neighborhood called Torpignattara, uh, where uh, tourists usually don't go. You can sample uh, Roman cuisine for uh, reasonable prices. You should try Gricia, which is a kind of pasta, and it's uh, very good there. But be warned, Roman talk loudly at the table. La Confraternita dell'Uva is a, a Sicilian restaurant which is uh, in Pigneto. It's uh, really good because they have different kind of Sicilian food. Uh, they have great appetizer with caponata and uh, all this Sicilian uh, stuff made with ceci, chickpeas and everything. And also what I love there is uh, primi, uh, pasta. Pasta made with the pistachio sauce is great. There is plenty of uh, very good restaurants in Rome. One that I would like to mention is the So What restaurant, which is in, in the heart of Pigneto neighborhood. And it's run by this guy called Paolo and his wife. They've been doing this blog for years and um, it, it was focused on, on vegan-only recipes. Then, then they published a book uh, called Vegan Riot uh, with all their recipes, which are basically recipes from, from Italian popular cuisine, which are already vegan. Paolo has been running this, this very important label for over 15 years called SOA. They've been doing over 100 releases of hardcore and punk and he's been singing in plenty of bands, he's still singing for this hoi band called Colonna Infame and now he's running this restaurant and you need to call for a reservation because it's always packed. Il Marito Zaro is... Uh, it's your favorite place. It's one of my favorite places, yes, because it's a bar where you can have cappuccino but you can have a special sweet, which is a typical Roman sweet called Il Maritozzo. And uh, it's a kind of sweet bread roll filled with uh, whipped cream. And I think it's really the best in, in Rome. Uh, and the special thing about Il Maritozzo is that it's there since the 60s. And uh, you can go there at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, and they are open all night long. So sometimes when uh, we have a gig and we feel like we want to eat something sweet, we stop by. Rome has uh, several uh, record stores. My favorite ones are uh, Radiation Records and uh, Soul Food if you are looking for second hand records, punk rock or soul music or uh, classic rock. I would recommend Radiation Records, which is my record store. We have two locations, one is in Pigneto neighborhood and the other one is very close to the Colosseum. Uh, we buy and sell new and used uh, records, punk and hardcore, indie rock, reggae, hip hop, a lot of jazz, uh, a lot of experimental and we also have a, a series of reissues on vinyl of punk and reggae classics and I definitely recommend you to come and check those two stores out. And Soul Food is a record store run by uh, Gigi Kika uh, since the early 2000s. There you can find uh, very cool um, vinyls, fanzines, t-shirts and weird stuff. Uh, they have a lot of records of um, 
obscure underground dependent music uh, since the 50s to uh, today's bands. Uh, the store is five minutes walk from the uh, Colosseum. They also have a um, very cool label called Eight Records and they produce uh, several Italian bands uh, such as the Taxi, which you know later became the Judah, uh, the Intellectuals, the Cactus, which was my band ten years ago. They also produce well, uh, well known bands, uh, records. Hell Nation Record Store sells books and vinyls. Uh, re releases uh, mainly punk or oi or hardcore or books on uh, country culture. It's a little record store and it's owned by a friend of ours. He also organizes gigs or a little art exhibition there and uh, we like to go there because it's always like a little party. For general shopping, I'd say Rione Monti. Monti is this neighborhood that is really downtown, but it still has a sort of a different feeling from the rest of the downtown area. It's quite secluded, although it's really so much between all the ancient monuments and important monuments in Rome. This is why back in the 70s, it was the red light district where all the brothers would be and it still has that feeling. It feels like a village in a way. You can find a lot of different uh, little stores where they sell um, lots of artisanal crafts and things. A little bit fancy for my taste, but best second-hand uh, shop are there. Pifebo and King Sides. And also there's all sorts of food, especially in that area. They especially care about the creative part of serving food. The biggest flea market in Rome is uh, Porta Portese. It's open only once a week on Sunday, Sunday morning. They have a lot, a lot of different things uh, from second-hand clothes, uh, books, records, vinyls of course, uh, and weird stuff. So you just have to take the time to, to walk there and look around and it's really a lot of fun. In some clubs you have to have a special card to enter, it's called a Circolo Arci card and Circolo Arci is a network of clubs in Italy. Um, this card costs between 7 and 8 euros and it lasts all the year. You can enter uh, Fanfulla which is uh, one of our favorite clubs here in Nieto district. Uh, good drinks uh, and uh, very good music. There is uh, always something uh, uh, worthwhile going on there and uh, DJs playing music until 4 in the morning. A real underground club. They have uh, one or two live bands playing every day. The place is super packed because everybody goes there. You can always find something for everyone. Something really great about that place is that they have their own fan base. So that means that anytime you go, there will always be people there. And as a band, it's fantastic because you'll always have people looking at you, doesn't matter what you play. Another favorite uh, club is Trenta Formica, which is also located in Pigneto district. And uh, almost every night there is a, there is a gig. And uh, um, when there is not a gig, there is some party with a very cool DJ. A lot of great bands play there. Um, different kind of music. It's quite cheap and the, um, the drinks are, uh, are, are good and uh, not expensive. In Italy we call bar uh, something different from what we call bar. Uh, bar is um, in the morning is like a coffee bar where you can have breakfast and you can take a cappuccino, coffee and you can um, have a lunch you can also uh, drink uh, some wine or beer uh, and uh, mainly they are open only on the, during the day but some bar is uh, also open during the night. If you want to uh, find a wine bar, pub uh, during the night you have to go especially to uh, San Lorenzo and Pigneto. Besides wine, Italy uh, is starting to get well known for its uh, artisanal breweries where you can taste great beers and uh, maybe seated outside. Uh, one of these is uh, Op Corner, 
in near Pigneto, that is a very good neighborhood for nightlife. Besides great beer, uh, you can have also fantastic uh, aperitif for a very reasonable prices. And it's also a little bar, but it's just really friendly. You can have a spritz or whatever you want. One place I would recommend to have some good wine in Rome is the Enoteca that they have inside for Ernestino. They have a good selection of different DIY productive organic uh, wine. A guy named, named Walter, he opened this wine place because he's very passionate about mm, wine and uh, he's, uh, he's also organizing this festival called Enotica, where a lot of small wine producers from Italy come over and have people taste their product. You really can't go wrong with that.